Hi there. Today we're looking at datasets for data-driven reinforcement learning by Justin Fu, Aviral Kumar, Ophir Nachum, George Tucker, and Sergey Levine. So this is a what you would call a, a data set paper or a benchmark paper. And the main point or the main uh, area of the paper is what's called offline reinforcement learning. So offline reinforcement learning you, usually in reinforcement learning you have this task right you have the agent and you have the environment and the agent gets some sort of observation and has to come up with an action in response to that observation and then it gets back a reward and another observation and again it has to come up with an action and the goal is to maximize the rewards over time that the agent gets while interacting with the environment. So usually this is organized in what are called episodes, which basically means if you have some sort of environment, right? And here is the agent and uh, here is the goal, right? The goal is a inverted triangle <laughs> and there are a bunch of walls right here, right? So it's, it looks kind of a maze that the agent has to navigate. Then one episode is, could be the agent moving around until it either finds the t target or hits a wall or it just kind of goes around and around and then at some point you say, all right, that's enough, uh, over, game over. And usually, um, in reinforcement learning, you perform many of these episodes and then you learn from them. So you perform episodes and each episode um, gets into usually some sort of replay buffer, right? Let's call this replay buffer. And you do this many times and at the same time that you're doing this, you're using the things that you stored here in order to learn. Right, so the agent learns from these things, right? So it acts with the environment in this loop, in this fashion. Then once it has done an episode, it puts it into the re replay buffer, and then it learns from the actions it has performed. This is what is usually called online reinforcement learning. Right, so this loop is online. Online means because the agent learns from its own actions, right? Now, in contrast to this, there is offline reinforcement learning. So in offline reinforcement learning, the agent has to learn from someone else's actions, right? So this connection here is severed. Um, instead, you have other agents, let's call these agent one, agent two, multiple agents, agent three, they all have their own interaction with the environment, right? Environment, environment interactions. And um, they feed their experience into, they perform these, these episodes, they feed their experience into the replay buffer. And then the agent just has to learn from that. So whatever happened here, this was previous, right? And now the agent has to learn how to maximize its reward just from the experience that is in the replay buffer um, from these other agents. This is what's called offline reinforcement learning. It means the agent learns from someone else's uh, actions. Um, usually the, the power of reinforcement learning course comes from the fact that you learn from your own actions. It means that, for example, if you already have some successful trajectories here, right, you found the target, you can try to replicate that because you know which actions you performed and if you don't, you know, change anything, you're probably going to find the target again just by randomness, all right, because you've done it already once and so on. So you, you kind of know all the intrinsics of your own algorithm that led you to reach the target. Um, now, this is an entirely different case with all of these other agents. You have no clue how they were acting, why they were acting, right? 
you just know, okay, they did a series of actions and that gave them some kind of reward. And you have no idea um, what their reasoning was or anything. All you re really can learn from is their sequence of actions. Now, why is that problematic, right? So if all of the agents, for example, if this is, if this is a, an actual platform and is really right steep here, wow, this is a, all of here is, is really steep cliffs, right? Uh, and you, you can actually fall off, but the, the agents, they're, they're humans, right? So they don't want to fall off. So what they're going to do is they're just going to take steps that are maybe like this or maybe like this, but they're, they're humans. They're smart. They're never, they're never going to, they're never going to fall off here, right? Why is this a problem? If you're now trying to learn from this experience, and your policy by some chance because you might have some entropy in there or something you do know what happens if you make a move like this and you also know what happens if you make a move like this right already two humans have done these moves but what happens if you make a move like this you just don't know right in classic reinforcement learning you would get a negative reward and you could learn from that to not do this action anymore but in in this case, you simply don't have any data to uh, to to tell you what happens when you go off there. So you see that there's a there's a problem if you are not able to learn from your own experience, but you have to learn from something or someone else's experience. The distribution of experience uh, that you have av available to you might be on like not not fully specific specific of the of the environment it, it might be very different from what you would do and it might be very not conducive to what you want to do with it so the task of offline reinforcement learning is harder than online reinforcement learning but it also has uh, many many applications sometimes it's just not possible to do online reinforcement learning when for example in medical field right think of think of the medical field where you want a robot to perform a surgery <laughs> you can't just do reinforcement learning uh, in with our online techniques because they're just gonna try a bunch of things and see what works and you don't you don't like maybe you want that I don't want that uh, so necessarily you're going to be left with let's have this robot learn from human experts right so that's a task for offline reinforcement learning. Um, there are many more tasks. For example, if you think of a uh, search engine, you will have many, many, many logs from human searching things and you simply store them. You simply have them in a buffer. Now you want to maybe uh, train a reinforcement learning agent that, I don't know, serves the best possible ads or something like this. Um, you want to do this in a way that you can use all of that data, even though that data wasn't collected by that particular agent, right? So there's the crucial difference to supervised learning, again, is that you have this, this interactive structure, right? This multi-step interactive structure, because in a supervised learning, you also have, you also have this buffer here, right? In supervised learning, you simply have your labeled data set. Um, but the difference is in supervised learning, you always know what the right action is currently right because you have the labels in offline reinforcement learning you don't know you right you might be here and there are three actions available right and uh if you all you know is that the 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 demonstrator a these actors here one of them has done this and then this and then this and then got a two you have you have <laughs> no clue what happens if you do this and then this and then this, right? All you know is that this action here might eventually lead to a two, right? And uh, you also can't try it out because uh, you can't try out this path because you don't get a reward here. You have to find, and this is the, the task here, you'll have to find some other example or stitch together. They make a good example here. So this paper, 
basically proposes a benchmark for offline RL algorithms. So what they do is they have a bunch of data sets, right? They have a bunch of these replay buffers around for different tasks. They have a collection of this that they collected with various techniques. So there's human demonstration, there is other agents and so on. They have that and you're supposed to take one of them, learn something, learn an agent, and then evaluate it on an environment, right? And they propose which ones are suitable uh, for this. They give you the data and they give you the environment to evaluate it on. In the end, you'll get a score and you can compare your offline RL algorithm with others. They also provide some benchmark implementations uh, for algorithms that already do this, and they show that they don't really work well. So one of the, one of the tasks is this maze here. Um, in this maze, you will the, the task is you are somewhere, let's say here, and you need to go somewhere, let's say here, and you need to find your way, right? And the demonstrations you have, the data in your replay buffer uh, is such that this is the same task, but never the same start and end points like you are tasked to. So you might have one in your replay buffer, you might have one trajectory, one episode that went like this from one to two, right? And you'll, you'll be able to see the reward of that. And you might be, have one trajectory that was from two to three, like this, right? So both of these things actually give you really high reward. So if you were an agent, right, and you had to learn, and now the task is please go from one to three, what you could do is you could simply say, ah, I know, I know the green thing gave a pretty high reward and the yellow thing gave a pretty high reward. So I know the green thing, thing started at one and I know the yellow thing ended at three and I know they both have this common location. So what I might do just is I might go to that common location and then go on on the different path, right? So you have to somehow stitch together experience from other agents in order to make your task work. Now, this is a very explicit example. Of course, what we want to do is we want to do this in a more implicit, deep learning uh, way, <laughs> ideally, and not manually stitch together other trajectories. Though I'm pretty sure that would not, that would not be so, so dumb, right? Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of data augmentation you could do during training simply by stitching together um, other, other trajectories, right? So from this trajectory, you could actually, not only could you make other gold conditioned ways, for example, from here to here or from here to here, you could make from here to here, anywhere where you have shared points, you could go, um, you could train a policy that goes there and then goes further or something like this. I'm pretty sure there's already an algorithm that does things like this, but I'm just thinking aloud here. Um, all right, so this is one of the tasks and you see that the, the um, that, that you'll have to learn a policy to go as fast as possible from any point to any other point. Um, and you're, all you're given is a database of experience that already exists from some other agent, but never will probably never the exact route that you need to learn right now. All right. So the goal is how fast or how efficiently can you do this? This is one task in this data set. The next task is very similar is this grid world here where there is this uh, red square, a uh, red triangle, that's your agent. And then there is the green square, that's your uh, goal or vice versa. And so you're, you're basically tasked to not hit the walls here and, um, and to go about your, your way finding the target. Um, there are more elaborate things like this uh, Mujoko environment here 
or the ant maze where you have this little ant with you know the the spider legs so this is no longer you can just move in either direction you have to actually control the legs and um there's also this arm this robotic arm so you see there is a wide diversity of tasks and also there is a wi wide diversity of how the replay buffer was constructed so in some cases the replay buffer is actually constructed by a human performing in this environment so in this hand in this hand manipulation task you'll have demonstrations from humans you see it's not particularly many samples here it's uh, 5000 samples um, which i guess are are is a chopped up version of um, I'm not really sure how the, the human things were constructed, but you can clearly guess that the degrees of freedom that you have in a robotic hand is much, much higher than you could learn just from these 5,000 samples. If you were to, you know, an, an online RL algorithm that just does random exploration will need much more than these 5,000 samples. And the 5,000 samples won't be iid distributed with all the degrees of freedom it, it will just be here's what a human does right and um so so you can think of algorithms like uh inverse reinforcement learning or something like this but here in inverse reinforcement learning usually you assume that the expert um the expert is kind of trying to achieve the same reward as you do but this is not necessarily the case here. You have a given reward structure, but you are tasked to simply learn from these demonstrations. Um, you can see it's also possible that there is this is constructed by a policy, and that usually means that they... Um, so either it's, um, it's constructed by let's say a reinforcement learning algorithm that was trained in an online fashion, but maybe not as well. Uh, but also I think they have a behavior cloning policy that they got from human demonstration, I think. So that there are many ways. Also, sometimes you have a planner, which is, can you imagine, it's, it's, a, it's an algorithm that wasn't machine learned. So <laughs> I know almost unthinkable, but in these in these kind of mazes you can actually do planning algorithms that um can can sort of so i know this is crazy and, and crazy talk and the niche topic but there exists things like a star search where uh where where you can construct the kind of shortest path uh through these mazes and things like this so yeah, that's, I know, I know, that, that, is, that is very niche. But <laughs> you can construct policies like this, and then you can use those as your replay buffer filling. And you can already see that this also will be a massively different distribution of data than uh, you would get with an online RL algorithm, right? So in conclusion, they do test other they do test other algorithms on this. In conclusion, they say that most offline RL algorithms nowadays, they don't work well on these, on these data sets. Um, the only data sets where they do work well is where the replay buffer was generated by some sort of, um, like here, by some sort of policy by some sort of reinforcement learning policy. So what they would do is they would train an online policy and the experience generated by that online policy while it learns will make up the replay buffer. And if you use that replay buffer for offline learning, then they say it tends to work okay. But if you have other methods of collecting the data um, that are it's very different from uh, this offline, uh, sorry, from, an, from a reinforcement learning collection approach, then it tends not to work as well. All right, so if you are interested in offline RL, please check out this paper. All their code is available right here. 
note that the link in the paper doesn't seem to work. The true link is uh, here. I'll also put it in the description. And with that, I wish you a good day. Bye.